Welcome to the broadcast, Meal Fruits. It's very nice to see you. We are going to have a royal romper to begin with, featuring William, Catherine, Meghan, and a few of the other royal family members. But the main thrust of this broadcast will be a nice and cosy tip jar corner coming up, featuring my new jacket that I found yesterday. Isn't it wonderful? And also featuring a tribute to a basketeer that we have sadly lost over the past year, who I would like to mention. I would also like to welcome 1,000 new subscribers, 1,000 new fruits in the basket since the last show. I hope you'll have fun here and I'm sure, well I know that my basketeers will make you feel very welcome. So that is what's going on with the show and I will put a timestamp for Tip Jar Corner in the description box. America have fallen in love with Big Willie. This is despite the best efforts of his brother, Little Todger. America are in love. Isn't it curious? This new Gallup survey, its findings are conclusive and they are cold comfort to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. So stick that in your pipe and smoke it with everything else that you may or may not have been smoking in those beautiful gardens at Montecito. Americans were asked for views on 15 public figures and Prince William trumped, 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 trumped. And I'm not talking about passing wind. He trumped him in every way. He got the most favourable results, despite... I've already said that. <laughs> oh dear, this is what happens without spectacles. Let's make no mistake about it, because of everything that went on with Diana and the love triangle with Charles and Camilla, the King's popularity took a huge dive all those decades ago and never fully recovered, and never really will although he is doing sterling work and also featured very favourably in this survey, in the rankings, very favourably, which astonished me. But that affected their reputation, but we needn't have any fear because Big Willie is coming up the rear, so to speak, with Catherine, and both of them are extremely well-liked, extremely popular, and continue to do us proud. The cream always rises to the top, doesn't it, my dears? And then on the other end of the lollipop, you have what curdles, and speaking of which, the Duchess of Sussex was seen. Yes, she made a furtive little fleeting appearance in her camel coat by Max Mara, and uh, she was wearing uh, an Hermes shawl with white skinnies, black and tan Chanel slingbacks, a Goyard tote bag, a Gucci belt. She was draped in cashmere to protect her from the 70 degree heat. <laughs> She looks a little bit gloomy, doesn't she, my dear? Well, as for her style, I, I don't think that the pants flatter her legs. And it is a lot of scarf, isn't it? It's a lot of scarf with that Hermes number, but I do like the look. I prefer the off-duty look. I like it when she doesn't look over-polished and overdone, so I appreciate that look, that casual look, I think she looks more charming and looks more real. It has been noted that she wore a wrist patch, a new calm biosignal processing disc. <laughs> it's just too much, isn't it? Apparently this disc activates the parasympathetic nervous system. <laughs> it's making me nervous. Was she marching? Who can say? The company have been parading the paparazzi shop of Meghan to promote this device and it's been noticed that the arm that it's on has a cuff rolled up conveniently to show it off. So I don't know what you think about that. What I will say is that good on her. This is exactly the kind of trashy old cheap tat that I was suggesting she would be wonderful for merching. This is what she's been missing. Dior don't want her. The big, you know, entities of the fashion world don't want her, my love. She's there for amusement. But the only ones that are really going to take her seriously are gimmicks. These little gimmicky things, you know, that you've, you flip through a catalogue and buy this, that and the other that's going to make you feel relaxed and make you feel chilled and sort out all your woes and worries. That is fine and it's perfect. So good for her. And I'm sure we'll be seeing that on her new version of Goop. Tig the poop. That's what we're going to be seeing. 
Having a remote control for your brain promotes optimal sleep, stress relief and relaxation. Well, Harry's got alternative cures for all of those ills, hasn't he, my dear? And from what we hear, Doria partakes too. Are you trying something new? Are you offering it to them to help them with their anxieties and insomnia episodes? Well, whatever works for you, my dear. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. But we have not forgotten that despite any stresses and strains that you might be finding yourself in, there are other members of your family by marriage that had to die under the stresses and strains that you too caused. So we don't forget about that and Harry hasn't forgotten about wifey either and he keeps telling us because he's been in Japan, he's been with cheesy nachos and they've been having this great big bromance in Japan, it's a little bit embarrassing isn't it? Um, and I'm not going to talk about this Japan trip because boring, 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 but let's just say that the worldwide privacy tour continues in earnest. They want their privacy, so they're going to go parading all around the world, squawking about missing their wives and how wonderfully charitable they are. My life is charity, Harry says, always has been, always will be. <laughs> not the altruistic kind then, my dear. The kind where you're patting yourself on the back for it. Shopping for our wives, says Cheesy Nachos. Isn't it funny? They don't want to court publicity, but mm, what exactly is it that they have to mention that they know will drive up publicity for the tour? Putting Megan's name in their mouths. So Cheesy Nachos does it vicariously. Shopping for our wives, so vulgar. So vulgar. Why'd you have to tell us? Why'd you have to share it with us? Although I did rather enjoy the photographs of the man with the fan at the sports summit. I thought he was quite adorable. The man with the fan. But this loving, this bromance, this cheesy bromance with cheesy nachos is sweet. You know, I'm glad for Harry if he's found someone who seems trustworthy and dependable and a little bit hunky as well. I'm pleased for the boy. He's got someone to hang out with when Megan's turfed him out for the evening and he doesn't want to go off to the local hotel, he can hang out with old Cheesy. And Cheesy will put up with him because Harry has enhanced his, well, I wouldn't say his image or his reputation, but his uh, global network of contacts and his association with royalty because he released an aftershave or a fragrance back in the day called Windsor. Windsor. I think the prophets went to Centre Barley, so wonderful, 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 but still using that Windsor connection. But the photographs of Harry together with Cheesy, they put me in mind of the same character that I saw whenever he was next to William, and that is the character of Dandini in the English pantomime. You have Prince Charming, then you have the second, the second Poor old leftover Dandini. It seems to be his fate, wherever he runs, wherever he escapes to. Dandini. Well, two sisters and two princesses that have also been cruelly referred to as characters from that pantomime in the form of the ugly sisters, Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie. Well, I'm certainly not saying that I suggest those sentiments. I think they're lovely looking girls and I think they're splendid royals. So I won't be having any of that, but the comparison has been made. I think that was probably due to some of their choices in millinery wear. But they certainly handle any second sister syndrome or any minor royal syndrome with grace. They are truly outstanding immaculate royals and usually shared photographs in celebration of Princess Beatrice's 35th birthday. Happy birthday to my big sissy. Oh, are you sure you're talking about Beatrice there or your cousin Harry usually? Happy birthday to my big sissy. Love you so much. She loves you too, my dear, I'm sure. Not quite sure why you couldn't share those salutations in a greetings card, but if that's the modern way, there we go. And that stud, Prince Michael of Kent, who's got more testosterone running around his little pinky than Prince Harry's little pinky. Though that stud has been frolicking in his winter season of life, enjoying that winter season of life on the French Riviera with more glamorous people. No sign of Marie Christine, no sign of his wife, but he was joined by the Italian heiress, Princess Camilla of Bourbon to Sicilies. 
and her family, including her husband, Prince Carlo, Duke of Castro. The prince wore lilac and blue with a baseball cap in primrose, and they were sharing moments of gaiety at the beachfront gastro bar. Le club, sac en sac. Life's a gas when you're a Michael. Prince Edward attended the opening fanfare celebrating Edinburgh International Festival. At his patron, he joined musicians and artists to celebrate the festival that was established in the aftermath of World War II as a cultural event, bringing together audiences and artists from around the world. He took the royal salute at the Edinburgh Tattoo as Honorary Air Commodore of RAF Waddington, and I thought he made for a very glamorous host that evening. As Royal Colonel, he visited 2nd Battalion the Rifles at Langmore for Operation Interflex, the five-week training programme for Ukrainian recruits. So he's been a very busy bee. And we also join their majesties in sending our warmest wishes to the fruits of Nova Scotia, where they have been experiencing severe flooding. And natural disasters seem to have a habit of all striking at the same time, don't they, my dear, in different ways in different parts of the world. And this week we had the enormous effects of nature's fury on the island of Maui, and the king sent a message to President Biden following the devastation caused by wildfires in Hawaii. He sent special thoughts from their majesties, however inadequate they might be at this sad time. Before I show you my finds and trinkets, I would just like to take a moment to say hello to seven Hawaiian fruits, my viewers who have sent a tip jar treat to me over the past two years. I found seven from Hawaii. Forgive me if I leave anybody off this list. It is certainly not intentional at all. But the people I found were Darlene, Liz from Honolulu, Nanette, Terry from Kapolei, Nanali from Honolulu, Marty from Honolulu. She is a, a wonderful woman from a very eminent family in Hawaii, an eminent philanthropic family. She's full of fun, been a great supporter of this channel. But all of those people, I thank you. Darlene, you're the one that told me that Hawaii was formerly known as the Sandwich Isles, which I had probably been told at school, but had gone in one ear and out the other. The Sandwich Isles. And I should know that because one of my besties is a Montague, as in emanating from an Earl of Sandwich. And I'm not talking about Julie Montague, I'm talking about a blood Montague. Uh, close to Julie Montague, but not her. Um, yes, I should know that, but I didn't, so thank you. And there was one more fruit of Hawaii, a special lady who's no longer with us, but I'm going to save my tribute to her till the end of this broadcast so that we can turn to more fun matters for a moment as I show you my finds and trinkets. Welcome to Tip Jar Corner. Let's begin with what I'm wearing today. Is this a wonderful jacket? Rather fancy, it feels wonderful. The cut is fabulous. It's got shoulder pads, which I love. The arms aren't too short for me because it's a lady's jacket. I found it for 25 pounds, which is a little bit more than I like to pay, but you know, it's from a charity shop. And I have to say, this year, like everything, the prices have gone up everywhere, but also in charity shops. And, you know, back in the day, you could find incredible bargains there for great prices. And uh, although this is a quality piece, you still would have been able to get this kind of thing for less. But I did pick it up because I will be able to rewear it here on the broadcast. It's good quality. And I didn't really have a jacket in this color with this design. I really like it. it the make is Linda Allard Ellen Tracy. So it's quite a well-known brand, I believe, and it's a weighty material. I like that. It's a little too early to wear it because I feel that it has more of an autumnal theme suited for autumn. But I wanted to wear ochre today, so I did wear ochre today. It's got no buttons, which is a little bit unfortunate because I prefer at least one button here so I can do it up. I fix it together with a little brooch today. I keep meaning to buy, you know, those big safety pins. I keep, it's been on my shopping list for about eight months and I just keep forgetting to, I should order them in, but yeah, so that's holding it together for me. But I rather like the way that it paired with this new headband as well in a matching tone. 
and new black earrings that I found vintage clip-on black chandeliers with little jetty beads hanging down. I thought they went together really well, but there are design swirls and motifs on the jacket in brown, black and pale yellow, but to my eye it reads sort of gold and ochre. You know, sometimes the colours that I tell you about and explain are quite different in real life to how it comes over on the video. And you might have noticed that some of the objects around me or even my hair colour can change in tone and appearance from video to video. That's because I have to slightly adjust the colour grading depending on the light that's coming through the time of day, how the light's hitting me, what I'm wearing. Sometimes a strong colour can throw everything off. It's only when I edit it. Sometimes it looks better than others. I'm, I'm afraid I can't always get it looking exceptionally good. But one time I did was in the previous broadcast when I wore this number and everything seemed to glow around me. The complexion looked good the, and the colour grading looked almost exactly true to how it is in real life. So when you saw this, you saw the actual colour. I didn't have to amp up or amp down, amp down the contrast that you were seeing the true colour. And I'd found this last week at a charity shop and it was so gorgeous, so perfect, this fl fl flimsy little thing. But the reason that it tickled me was because it's in the same colours that I told you about when it came to Barbara Cartland's house, Camfield Place, in Hatfield. I was describing her bedroom to you with the turquoise and the coral. Well, this popped up in turquoise and coral, my dear. And I was flabbergasted and overjoyed, and it went down so very well in the broadcast. It looked gorgeous, if I have to say so. And I don't think that I always come across gorgeous. Don't get me wrong, my dear. Sometimes I look like a complete state and try to have fun with it. But uh, I thought I looked fabulous in this. And I'm going to call it the Camfield gown and waft around in it like, ba like Babs Cartland, my dear. Somebody asked what was going on under the armpits. Well, it's this kind of design, my dear. I promise it wasn't a sweat patch. And although I'm describing it as turquoise, I enjoyed hearing your interpretations. Somebody called it India Ocean Blue. Another called it Powder Blue. There was Wedgwood Blue. And somebody said it reminded them of the exquisite China that depicts bucolic scenes. <laughs> I love what you find in my silly little things. Making magical out of the mundane, my dears. I picked up this tiger's eye brooch. I believe it's Tiger's Eye. Anyway, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Tiger's Eye or Agate. I thought it was rather fetching. An amber stone with milky stripes flowing through it, framed on a gilded crowd of gold curlicues. I styled the gown with silver grey pearls and matching gloves. And it was a marriage made in Camfield heaven. I think that I will rewear that in the future. And next time I might jazz it up with loads of pink a la Barbara Cartland. This find was very cheap and tatty. I think it is absolutely hideous and utterly revolting, but I just had to have it uh, <laughs> because I knew that I could get away with it if I wore it with simple accessories, discreet earrings, a black headband, because it's just a flash of colour. And as one of you noticed, I wore it backwards. I think it's supposed to go on this way, but I wanted the lace bib to make an appearance. So it was all about the lace bib really, and then a flash of colour around it. A uh, completely trashy item. It is so ugly. I can't believe anyone would design this. I can't believe anyone would actually pick it up and wear it. But hey presto, that's what being fruity is all about, isn't it? That's what Tip Jar Corner is all about. Giving these things new life, a new breath of uh, fresh air, showing them off to all of you and having fun with it in the dressing up box of life. So thank you, my dear. Burn the thing! Here is a vintage brooch I found with a large diamante stone in the centre. You can tell me what this style's called. I'm not quite sure when it goes across horizontally like that. But again, I'll probably use it to adorn a turban or something else. But I thought it was very pretty, just very simple. And one can't have enough diamonds, can one? Or paste diamonds, to tell you the truth. Um, then headbands, and I, <laughs> I've got to say, you know, I'm loving wearing headbands, they're so comfortable, practical. And the thing is, I always think that something on the head finishes off a look and adds confidence to a look. And crowns are uncomfortable, tiaras are very expensive to keep getting in. And you can find headbands very cheap and very cheerful. And because I like wearing new ones all the time, I've just done a mass order. I've done, and someone said to me once, how do we know that they're not just hauled in from China? Well, this next batch that I'm getting in are hauled in from China. <laughs> well, no, actually, it's Hong Kong. Hong Kong. You know, you can find them all over the internet. You can find them all over the place. And 
I'm getting them all over the place, my dears, because I like to try and wear new ones as much as I can. And I've got quite a collection. I'll try to show you. I'll try to show you them all on mass at one point. But it's headband central here going on, my dear, because you know sometimes I'll bring 19, 20 broadcasts a month, and it might be a different headband each time. Well, I have fun with them. This is a new one. I've got new ones on the way, and here are another couple of new ones. This is a delicious candy gem confection that I wore for you in the previous broadcast that matched my Canfield gown so very well. It has pearly beads, it has pink topaz, it has emeralds, you know, in my imagination. <laughs> it has yellow stones, blue stones, grey stones, gold and pale sage baubles. There are pearly beads, all tutti frutti, tutti frutti. Wonderful, wonderful. And this headband is very glamorous with leaves or petal applique. Chunky, glittering jemmies, tiny white beads, bubbling pearls, glinting silvers and greys, all bordered with a platinum braid on a white band. These very large earrings that you see here are vintage. Large green stones surrounded by bronzy gold frames in an oval shape, very appealing, very mysterious. They are adorned with fruit de mer, crustaceans, starfish, shells and seahorses. Isn't the attention to detail wonderful? These earrings are squares of gold studded with diamonds and pearls. It is not the most flattering shape for my ear. These angles, these squares are not especially flattering on me, but they are very shiny and I'm sure I'll find some way to rustle an outfit up to go with them. But I love these ones, these juicy fruits, so fun. These earrings are fruit baskets. They are fruit baskets of joy. Rich jewel tones on a serpentine twister design featuring royal amethyst, hot raspberry pink, sharp apple green, devious lover boy blue, and iridescent indecent tinge of peach. This was a birthday present for me last month. The Queen's Green Canopy. I haven't read it yet. I've just flicked through it. I want to take time to die digest it when I get the moment. I've got extreme book guilt. You know what I'm like, especially with so many second-hand bookstores near me, they just pile up and I dig into them, but I never get through them. And I feel that everything is so half finished. And I'm sure it'll be the same with this one. I just don't, I can't find the time to devote myself <laughs> as much as, there's so much to do, isn't there? There's just so much to do and see and watch that it becomes difficult. But just gazing at the green of these beautiful trees in this book with a forward by his majesty is a tonic to the soul. It's a treat for the eyes. It's published by random penguins. <laughs> Who else? They publish everything, don't they? And trees are the one thing that bring out the hippie in me. I love trees more than humans, probably. Some of my best friends are trees. There are certain parks, including Regent's Park, that have very special friends of mine planted and rooted into the earth and, of course, glorious Hampstead Heath. And we take them for granted so very much. I was out in traffic the other day taking a Uber somewhere. <laughs> I was taking you were stuck in traffic and I was in the most ugly place, you know, sort of cross section, dreary, ugly. And I saw this tree in the middle of this ugliness and I couldn't even work out. I didn't have my glasses on if it was an oak tree or a plane tree or something, but you could see the shape of it. And it was just there being a tree. And, you know, they are these sort of living beings with an intelligence running through them and standing the test of time and doing their thing and just being beautifully and perfectly a tree and it just brings you back to peace and restores you but people don't look at them do you and i'm the same you know even me who loves trees we take them for granted but they're just standing all around us like these gorgeous guardians these chaperones these totems of wisdom and we just take them for granted and oh yeah it's a tree we don't see that it is, uh, you know, the lungs of the world that are receiving and sharing and giving life and breath and oxygen and beauty and verdancy. And, it, well, you know, it is a, a refreshment for the soul. And this is a trip through the ancient woodlands and trees of the kingdom. With roots going back thousands of years, our ancient trees and woodlands have played an indelible role in defining the culture and heritage of the United Kingdom. Now this extraordinary living legacy is being celebrated by the Queen's Green Canopy, a unique tree planting initiative launched to mark the late Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee. Over the course of a year, 140 trees and woodlands dedicated to Her Late Majesty were captured in stunning detail 
by photographers Adrian Houston and Charles Sainsbury Place. And there's so much to see, many contributors of note, Dame Judy Dench, lots of lovies, scientists, environmentalists, you name it, they're in here, my dear. And one that I noticed was Samantha Cohen, CVO, who used to work for Harry and Meghan, didn't she? She resigned. And it was Valentine Lowe, I think, that said in one of his books that she was treated harshly and was reported as saying that she was dealing with teenagers with Meghan and Harry. Well, she appears in this book, this official book from the royal family. The young Princess Elizabeth became queen while staying among the canopy at Treetops Hotel in Kenya in 1952. Isn't that wonderful? She became our queen while she was up a tree. How fabulous is that? How many monarchs do you know that became king or queen when they were staying up a tree? During her long reign, Queen Elizabeth II planted more than 1,500 trees around the world. Trees that her late majesty planted at the beginning of her reign across the Commonwealth, from Australia to Canada, are now towering tributes to her love of nature. And isn't that a marvellous living symbol of the legacy of monarchy? They are not fly nights, they are not here to play the short game. They play the long game with diligent duty and service over decades and centuries. But watch out, on page 77, you'll find the much Markle you. Well, she might much Markle you, my dear, but she ain't ever going to much Markle me. I'll tell you that for now. George and Marina. The Duke and Duchess of Kent by Christopher Warwick. Mm, and it's got that old book smell, although I don't think it's incredibly old. It's not antique, but it's got that nice old book smell that I enjoy. Published to mark the 20th anniversary of Princess Marina's death, this compelling first full portrait of the most popular royal couple of their day contains much fascinating previously unpublished material on their private and public lives. Uncle of the present Queen, Prince George was the fourth and most impetuous son of George V and Queen Mary. Younger brother of both Edward VIII and George VI, he left the navy where he had been deeply unhappy to become a conscientious and effective factory inspector. But his wayward lifestyle and intimate liaisons with such flamboyant figures as Noel Coward caused serious consternation within the royal family. To this day, his death in a mysterious wartime plane crash remains the subject of much controversy and speculation. And this Duke of Kent was the father of the existing Duke of Kent that we all know and love, and also of Prince Michael of Kent, who's been out frolicking on the French Riviera. So at least a happy ending for them, although they miss their father greatly, I'm sure. Also, for my birthday, I received more goodies from Fortnum and Mason. I've shown a few before. I showed a great big coronation biscuit tin. I think I've shown these strawberry shortbread biscuits. I'm sharing with you because I, I just love the tins. The tins are gorgeous really nicely done and a fair price. I also got new biscuits, Scottish Ling Heather honey biscuits, I think Highgrove honey maybe, but another gorgeous tin there. Uh, I didn't enjoy these quite as much. I mean, I enjoyed them enough to waffle them all down within 24 hours, my dear, but I wouldn't repurchase these. I mean, these were kindly gifted to me by a friend, but I wouldn't repurchase those. These were lovely. Um, but this coffee smells very nice. This was another gift celebrating the coronation of their majesties by Fortnum and Mason. I haven't tried any yet. It smells absolutely divine. Well, as I mentioned, I wanted to finish off by paying tribute to a beloved basketeer who is no longer with us. When I was looking through all those names of Hawaiian fruits who have sent me a tip, another that sent me a tip on two occasions was Deborah Mattioli. She sent a tip for a cup of coffee one month and then she said another tip for a slice of cake the next month. This was going back many months, but in her first message to me, she said, I am terminally ill. So sorry I couldn't send more. I have seven years college, but the USA doesn't take care of its ill. So I am in poverty, but your content is so great, brightens my day. Thank you from Hawaii. Well, of course, when she said that, my, my heart was broken and I did actually respond to her and say, my dear, if you're living in poverty, please don't be sending me tip jar treats even for a cup of coffee. You know, you have your own bills to pay and things to do. But she totally ignored me, did the same thing the following month. She wanted to show her gratitude and I accept that with good grace. 
She said the second time, you bring, you bring me great joy during my travails with stage four breast cancer. And that is a very noble side effect of your work. Well, that, makes a, that means a great deal to me that she said that. I know that it's full of froth and silliness, but I also happen to know that what I do brings you a lot of joy. And that's really satisfying and really rewarding. I'm told every day that I brighten up an idle hour for many of you and you do that for me as well fruities you do that for me so it's a two-way street she says i've lost some of my brilliance with chemo side effects but thanks to god i can still follow your creative mind thanks for listening to my story i'm sorry i can't send more but the usa makes its ill face homelessness so i am borderline poverty and require a roommate to barely survive with seven years of university. I wish I was born in Britain. God bless the Queen and dearest River. Debbie Mattioli, XOXO. Well, of course, that was very humbling. And as I told her, she was silly to be sending me tip jar treats if she was in poverty. She didn't need to do that, but she wanted to do that. And uh, she came to mind and I looked over her old messages telling me that she was terminally ill and I wondered if she had died and she has died. Deborah E. Mattioli died on January 2022, age 64, because I think it was in the summer months of 2021 that she had contacted me. And so it was quite some time ago, but she died at 64. Her favourite scripture was Psalm 23, which I will read at the end of the broadcast in her memory. And I have also made a donation of £100 in her name to cancer research. I was umming and ahhing. I was looking around to try and find the right charity to donate to for relief efforts in Maui. But I don't know if you find this, but you always, you will donate and then you will find there's something dicey about the charity. You don't trust it. You don't know where the funds are going to. I'm sure if I had longer to look into it and ask your advice, then I would find out the right charity. But I wanted to make a donation before it went out of my mind. So I do, donated to cancer research and specifically for the breast cancer department, a donation of £100 in her name. On behalf of all fruit basketeers. So every fruit has its time. We blossom, we ripen, we wither on the vine. But here and now in this tiny little corner of the internet, I pay tribute to the tens and thousands of people that will watch this and never knew the name Debbie Mattioli. Now you know that name and you know that she was a generous woman she was a kind, loving woman who was giving and thoughtful and kind by all accounts. I remember her with fondness and not with sadness today. I am going to light a candle and say her favourite psalm. And I bid you all farewell. Enjoy the rest of your day. I look forward to catching up with you soon. Leave me a nice juicy comment and come and see me next time, my dears. And I will say toodle pip. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs>